The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hey friends with the Happiness Jungle TV show, CammieBaker.com here. I'm the queen of the jungle for the day and I am super excited to have two queens with me and I want to introduce you and tell you a little bit about how we met. So, as you know, I am the author of Mingle to Millions, the art and science of building business relationships and mastering referrals. And because of that, I was doing a speaking engagement at a group on the North Shore, and I met Miss Lisa. And Lisa is beautiful. She is a, she helps people with their fashion and help spe specifically men. I got to talk to her about that because I'm single. And uh, and so that's how she and I met. And then I found out she's doing a fashion show for men, a men's fashion show. And because of that, she's doing it at the Breakaway, the Breakaway, Breakaway, yeah, Breakaway. And so when she said she wanted to bring the owner of Breakaway on, I said, absolutely, let's do it. So, ladies, I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to help you to promote your event that you have going on and just to hear a little bit about your story, how you got started in business, what makes you a power lady boss, you know, how, just the whole thing. So, Lisa, I'm just going to start with you, hon. Have you always been an entrepreneur? No, I have not, actually, um, but my, I watched my dad. Uh, my dad was a sales champion, and I learned a lot from him. We grew up with the books and the tapes, the Zig Ziglar, the Dale Carnegie, you know, so I had a really great foundation for sales and marketing. Um, I actually did sales for about 18 years of my life, and coming out from that, I decided to search for, you know, other things, and that led me to where I am today. Well, that inspires me to hope that all the CDs and things that my daughter has been forced to listen to over the years, that maybe one day it'll rub off on her. She's actually 19 now. And I, I, I swear the entrepreneurial gene has skipped a generation and it kills me. But, um, but so, so you were in sales for 18 years yes. and, and you were telling me in your story that it set you up for what you're doing today. Tell me how being in sales and being in a, in a man's world kind yes. of is what set you up for what you're doing now. Well, Along the way, I, I have to tell you what I sold. I sold cars. And when I started selling cars, I had no idea about cars. I really didn't. Um, I stumbled into this profession just because, um, you know, I, someone approached me with it. I didn't think I could do it. Uh, they were really desperate for salespeople. They were starting up a brand new dealership. And uh, they approached me and said, you know, I really think you'll be great at this. And I go, they're like you have to love people and you have to love cars and you love both and I said yeah but I, I really hate sales so I interviewed and I started I decided to give it a shot and I started and I got crushed I got crushed the guys either you know wanted to do other stuff with me or they just hated me being there and so I they gave me a really hard time in the beginning and I you know this, I eventually, one of the clients in particular that I approached was a friend of my dad's. And he looked at me, and this was a, a big turning point in my life, so I'll, I'll mention it. Um, he looked at me, patted me on the shoulder, and said, Lisa, I, you know, this is all nice that you're coming to me, that you thought of me and everything, to, you know, but you will never sell me a car. Because you'll just never know enough about a car that, like a man would. So this is back in 1996. Hmm. Challenge accepted. <laughs> and I went home in tears and pretty much was going to quit that day. And my father said, you know, well, you know, you can quit and probably go do like some secretarial job or do, you know, whatever else that I was searching for at that time. He's like, or you could prove him wrong. And I'm like, I don't know how. And he's like, well, if he said that you will never know as much about cars like a man would, well, what are you going to do? I said, I have to know as much about cars as a man would. So I went to the library. There was no Google. There was no internet. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing really except 
the library and magazines. So I bought every Consumer Reports I could find and Motor Trend and went to the library. I got the Lady Bird book and I learned about a car. Mind you, I did not even know tires came in different sizes. So fast forward, uh, I think about two years later or three years later, I became in the top three. And then from my fourth year, I was top salesperson. Um, I, you know, fell in love with it. I fell in love with my clients. I loved people, and I think that's what kept me there. So I had a great, solid 18-year relationship in car sales, I guess. And, and it wasn't just well, any car. You don't have to say the name or you can. I don't know if it matters <laughs> to you, but it was, it was a high-end vehicle. Yeah, I started off with uh, the dealership owned Honda Land Rover Jaguar. I started off, you know, learning those three, which is doesn't sound like a lot, but those cars have an intense amount of information to learn. Um, and if you want to be really good at your craft, you have to know it. And it was a lot of information. I feel like I should get some kind of degree, <laughs> the amount of study and research and education and comparisons that I had to do. And then eventually I moved on to BMW with the uh, uh, Brayman Group in Palm Beach, which was a very um, phenomenal brand. Mm. Um, they also carried Rolls Royce, Bentley, um, Porsche, which I got to drive all those cars, and it was. And the fun. beautiful thing about that is working in a man's world. Yes. And working in an elite luxury brand. Yes. You got to notice and learn and see what styles looked good, and that leads us into today. So tell exactly. us a little bit about what you do today. So my passion, really, what I dis established from working all those years in the dealership was that knowing my professional image did matter. And so if I presented myself in a professional manner, if I looked more professionally, I did get the positive attention that I needed in order to be successful. And so I noticed that a lot of salespeople didn't do that necessarily. They didn't think, think it was important, but I really wanted to show them that it is. So uh, along the way, I, I, I did meet with a life coach and she really got me to stop and think about what really, what were my passions. And I kept coming back to this trying to uh, share with the world just how important it is to present yourself in a very professional manner, in a respectful manner, to look respectful at all times, you know, just to have that really um, pleasant disposition that people want to approach. And I think that's so important because I think a lot of people who don't get that, they may have really great story to sell or information or a product to sell but they may come across the wrong way that may turn off people. And that's, some, that's just another hurdle to struggle with if you're in, in the sales industry. So for you specifically, you help people to come up with their style, with their, with what their, their clothing, their look, the whole thing, and specifically for men, who's, who's a perfect client for you? Oh, anyone, especially anyone going through a transition. Let's say there was a, a job, a change in careers. Uh, someone with a weight loss or weight gain situation. Um, I deal with a lot of uh, men who are going through a divorce, and divorce does affect one um, not only personally, but physically and professionally in some cases. Um, so I just, uh, because I've had a similar situation, I am able to embrace and nurture that and uh, help them try to find that path of reestablishing their confidence mm. and reestablishing, you know, that that look of, you know, that, that that extra edge, that just that sharpening up that edge. Well, we definitely need to partner up more often because, <laughs> because you know, my thing is all about who are you being? Who are you being? Mm -hmm. And so my specialty is personal branding, yes. lead generation, and business networking strategy. But I am not going to go into a store and tell you what colors look good on you or what's the best hairstyle. Like, I'm not the stylist. I don't, I don't know any of that stuff. I help them from the inside out. You know, who are they being? What are they saying? And more importantly, how are they saying it? Mm -hmm. um, so when they, when they can physically look good, it, I always say it's not what you wear. It's how you wear it. That is true. Mm. It's how you wear it. Because I have had on a $10 dress. And have people say, oh, my God, I love that dress. I love that dress. I love that yeah. dress. <laughs> and it's not because it was a $5,000 Gucci dress. It's because of how I wore it. Mm -hmm. And so it is. It's so important. So, Miss Cheryl, let us not leave you out of the conversation. So <laughs> how did you ladies meet? And tell me a little bit about your business history. Well, I met Lisa through the breakaway. She came in one time, and we immediately hit it off. She's very smart and bright. 
and she was helping us because the breakaway opened about two and a half two and a half years ago and it was a sinking ship um, we kind of took it over and um, really had to invest a lot of time into it it needed TLC it hasn't been touched in a long time so um, Lisa was kind enough she came in and she was kind of a light and built us up a little bit with her smile so and oh. and some of the uh, great ideas that she had and and so we networked a little bit and that's how we met uh, so not only can you can you refurbish somebody's look you can refurbish somebody's <laughs> business sounds like you're multi-dimensional <laughs> that's very kind of her to say though I have to say thank you yeah she just can't you know it's it's it she was a bright light um, when you open a business that's kind of risky for us uh, we had a successful uh, business which we still do 25 years in Malden called Pizza Pizza um, and that's my husband's business. Um, my career was uh, at MGH. I spent the last 18 years as an administrative manager and an international rep for the hospital, um, and which a job which I really loved. Um, I have a seven-year-old daughter, and my husband took this big venture on and wanted me to come on board, and I was hesitant. I've been a very independent woman. I never worked with my husband. We have a great relationship, um, but after seeing how much uh, he was putting into this new business, I thought I'm not going to be able to commute and I wanted to put the effort in and try to help out our family and it's turned out to be wonderful. So this was the first business that you've actually owned? First for me, because it, it was a big investment for us. Um, mm. the, uh, Breakaway is a multifaceted, eclectic place. It used to be the old Village Green. Um, and back in the 60s and the 70s, it was a heyday. They had a place called The Barn, which we still have, which played music. They had many people grace the doors, Bette Midler, The Stones, some really interesting music, um, and some big names. And, and they were the place to go. But as time went on, the Village Green never got touched. And it was sad a little bit because it had such rich history. And it was kind of forgotten. When you walked in, when my husband first took me there, I cried. Mm. I walked in. It was not what I expected. It really needed a lot of work. So what have you done to it to refurbish it? Because it sounds like it's a, a, a massive success now. So what's, what's different about it? Well, when we first went in, we immediately um, gutted out the kitchen because uh, it's also a full-service restaurant. We have two function halls, actually three. Um, How many it, people can you hold, just in case anybody needs a function hall? Oh, we can <laughs> hold anywhere from parties small to 500. We have big a big place. Yeah, we have a big place. Um, we do a lot of different things. For, uh, the biggest thing that we were able to do when we first came in, my husband's a big community person in Malden, and, and we just we established a big name there with fundraising. We love doing that, and um, we brought it to Danvers. We, we decided that we were going to help the community and plus get in the community because nobody knew us, you know. Um, so, and they were hesitant. Nobody was coming to Timothy's or the Village Green. And, and so we decided we're going to change the name right away and we didn't want to close. So we had to gut out the kitchen. We had to gut out the tavern. We had to put high-end bars in, new patio, new roof. Um, and a lot of TLC, there's so much more that needs to be done because it was literally not touched. Nobody was doing anything. So that's interesting. So it was fundraising and getting involved in the community that helped you to do that because, you know, my specialty is cause marketing and helping people to find a cause that they're passionate about and use it as a way to market themselves and their business. And there's many different varieties of cause marketing. As a matter of fact, I looked it up on, on uh, YouTube the other day and I saw a couple of different videos that are similar, but not exactly. Like not, not the way my twisted gorilla <laughs> mindset works, very different. But so that's interesting that actually using cause marketing actually is how you did it. So what kind of fundraisers do you do? What's, what's been your biggest success there? Well, I'm part of the Rotary and Rotary Club, which I knew nothing about, but I got involved with it. Um, we raised about uh, $12,000 for Houston. 100% of the funds went. We donated our hall completely, and we had an entertainment. We had bands. We had um, Engine Room with Barry Gaudreau. 
from um, Boston um, came in and donated their time, the band's fortune. Um, we had Arrow Chicks there, which is a great female um, group, all, you know, Aerosmith uh, cover band. Huh. And so they came, <laughs> and we just had band after band donating their time for Houston at a time. We, we raised 100% of the funds, went right to the cause. Um, and what it did for us, it's good karma. As we talked about karma, you can go around. And it, 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 it also, um, it made us feel good. It was a lift, and we've, my husband's grassroots, that's how we start. We both think alike. So, um, I mean, uh, I'm not going to say that I was not nervous about Breakaway. I named it Breakaway, and uh, I came up with the name, And uh, but I was f afraid it might break us, and it <laughs> has not. It's actually been um, a shining star. It's been going wonderful. This past weekend, we had... Dirty Deeds, um, who was ACDC cover. Nice. We had Pyrotex. We had a nice. good 450 people in wow. the club, and me, one of them, partying with them and wow. having a great time. Um, and I enjoyed myself and was very proud um, to be part of it because it we're bringing some entertainment and live music back to the North Shore that has not been there for a while. Definitely. And I love it. Well, I, I didn't even realize what a big place it was. And when you mentioned that you're doing the men's fashion show there, I, I don't know, I've never heard of it, you know, being from New Hampshire, but I drive down to another place that's south of Boston to go out dancing. But now that I know about your place, oh. I'll be going there to dance. You 450 people. That's, it's a fun that's... night. And I could tell you what great nights to come. Because we have music <laughs> every, almost every night. Really? We have um, open mic on Tuesday nights with Brian Mays. Very, very, um, I mean, Sometimes I can't believe some of the musicians that are around me, and I don't realize, oh, you know, they were in Jake Isles, or they were part of Boston, or, wow. mm -hmm. you know, um, and Brian Mays, he does the open mic, and I love it because I never know what's going to come to our building. Hmm. And so it's Tuesday night's a great night, and Wednesday night we, we have uh, musical bingo, which is a fun night. People <laughs> really like musical bingo. It sounds crazy, but it's <laughs> a hip-hop night to go out, and it's... A, a very eclectic crowd, and they come in and they want the bingo because they would give free prizes. And, and here I have been waiting for Friday or Saturday to go out, and come now I come to find out I can go out any night of the week. You can go any night. You can come to the breakaway any night. You can get a paint night. You can come, <laughs> and you can, you never know what's going on. We have comedy with Dave Russo. He does wow. all of our comedy. So some nights you can be upstairs in the um, Highlands at a comedy night, and you can come downstairs and enjoy the band that's playing. Or you might want to come and enjoy Kimba Karaoke. He does every Sunday night. We have Jimmy Allen, who does country music. We have lots of country bands that come in. We have a popular one called No Shoes Nation. It's Kenny Chesney tribute band. They're amazing. It almost sounds like an uh, like a uh, amusement park or something. Like there's this part, and then there's this part. <laughs> there you can go up here. Do you remember and... the palace? It kind of reminds me of the palace a little bit back in the day, because the palace used to have all these little rooms. So if you wanted to go and enjoy rock music, which I like, you could go into this area. But if you're not so much into rock music, you could go over here and go to karaoke. Well, it's kind of um, like going on the, the booze cruise. So on the, on the booze cruise, they got top 40 music on the main deck, and then you go down and there's a band, and you go down one more level and it's techno. It's, so, it's, it's funny. It's, it, it's a big place. You just never know what's going to happen. I mean, sometimes there'll be somebody getting married up in the Highlands, and they're having a wedding. And then their wedding party will come down and they'll all be dancing in the club side, which is the barn, the original barn. It's so much, it, it, there's so much going on and um, I love being part of it. We might be doing a fundraiser. We've done fundraisers, such great causes and. Well, the, the fundraiser that you're doing together is for D.A.R.E. That is correct. Yeah, so the talk to me a little bit about how you chose that cause and, and, and how that all came about. Well, just with the drug act, epidemic today and uh, we wanted to really support the Danvers police in their um, efforts with D.A.R.E. and just make it aware because it's just it's what's going on in the world today. It's starting very young. We're not mm -hmm. talking of, um, we're talking kids 10 years old and, mm -hmm. and more and they need to make it, a, make our children aware starting at an early age. My daughter's very young and she knows already because they're already presenting it in the schools. And the D.A.R.E. program is such a great program. Um, Danvers 
is a wonderful community, and we wanted to try to help them with this. Um, and Derek, is Derek Kalala is his last yep. name? Mm -hmm. Yep, Derek Kalala heads this up, and we wanted to support this. We, we thought of a lot of different things to do, but this struck out as what we really wanted to. Well, and of course, with you being involved, of course it would be a fashion show. <laughs> because yeah, actually, the idea came between with Cheryl and myself. Um, we originally thought of a g generic, just a general fashion show, and I said, Cheryl, what about a men's fashion show? Let's do something different, you know, just do a men's networking fashion show event, but, you know, let's still use it for a cause. And we both agreed like right away. So we started getting together and putting some things together. Um, one of the things I know, um, just talking about the Danvers police, that the D.A.R.E. program started, I think, in the uh, Reagan era where there was that yeah. war on drugs. Mm -hmm. And back then they got a lot of support from the government and just didn't hold the, their mm -hmm. average fundraiser, I think, or average funds into the, the organization was probably somewhere like $10 million. Now it's whittled down to about three nationwide. Mm -hmm. And so I know for a fact that they are doing fundraisers every single month because mm -hmm. they need help. They really do in order to keep doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's still, the problem hasn't gone away. Look how many years there's been this war on drugs. The problem hasn't entirely gone, but drug education is key. I think it would even be worse if there was no education on drugs. So what do you ladies think? I mean, you, you, you brainstormed this idea and you came up with this event. What is something that our viewers and our, our listeners can actually do in their own communities to help give back? Tell us how you even came up with the idea, how you got it started. Where, where do you start? Well, we first reached out to business owners to mm -hmm. see if they would help out and get the word out there. Um, you could definitely come to our um, event that would be the first thing, but um, just support the business owners are big. Just getting them the, the karma passed around. When they see another business donating, they can donate. It's time and and effort. You wanna? Yeah, you know. as a, I mean, I can, I, I can just surely tell you what I've seen for myself and why I support Breakaway so much. I'm so excited about their place doing so well. Is that they continuously, I think on a monthly basis, do fundraisers and give back to the community. And I'm so proud of like all the things, they've, they've built up such a positive name for themselves, I can tell you that. She's very humble, but it's they're huge in Danvers. And what I love about it too, there's huge parking, it's very accessible off of 95 and Route 1. Uh, very easy to find, and the food's great. We didn't even talk about food. Well, I was going to oh, ask yes. you. What, I was going to ask you what is your specialty there? What What is the thing you get uh, ordered the most? Well, we are very famous for the pizza mm -hmm. because of piece of pizza. We make our own dough fresh. We mm -hmm. do a Sicilian style pizza, Italian. Um, we do round. We do calzones. We do anything from steak tips, which are marvelous. We have. Burgers to die for, bacon, egg, and cheeseburger, which I haven't had for a while because I'm dying a little <laughs> bit, but it is one of my favorites. Um, we have great food. We do functions where you can get high end. Whatever you want, you can get it at the breakaway. We, uh, I'm very proud of our two chefs, Chef Luciano and Chef Jim. Um, they've worked really hard tirelessly to uh, put out good food all the time because there's so many functions that could be going on in one day and yeah. they're working endlessly with the halls up and down. How do you keep up with all of it? Like what? A great team. We do have a great team. Um, we have a great general manager. His name's Dan Muccio. He I used to run um, the North Andover Country Club. And uh, oh my goodness, I can't think of the other place that he used to run. It's not open anymore, but um, Dan's a wealth of knowledge. He's come in and brought structure to the building. Um, my husband, uh, Joel Crowley, he uh, is hands on. There's nothing that we will not do in the in that building that we will not ask a staff member to do. Um, mm. We have a great function coordinator. Her name's Susan Dascoli. She's amazing. People love her. She sets up rooms, makes them beautiful, does things that, I mean, can go in and I say, wow, I can't believe this room is amazing. We do wine tastings. We do a lot of um, PTO fundraisers. We do... I can't even think of something that bar we mitzvahs. haven't done. Because we, we do bar mitzvahs. <clears throat> we do sweet 16s. We have... 16 for 16 special that people come in and we we give them this great menu so they can afford it um, we're, We really love what we do But the one thing that I love is I'm proud of it because we've gave, given a lot back to the community um, 
we've helped with um, families sadly with bereavements. Mm -hmm. We've had them come in and um, at sad times, but we've turned some things around. We helped raise money for a family. They lost their daughter very young, mm -hmm. and we did a memorial. We were able to raise forty-two thousand dollars that night. Um, wow! Mm -hmm. And things that would. Well, you know, social responsibility is such a big buzzword now. So many companies understand social responsibility. They have a responsibility mm -hmm. to to be social, to to understand the social needs that are that are at play in the world. And people want to do business with a business that's socially responsible. So this is just a great example of the fact that you're being so successful because of the good that you're putting out into the world and that you know, you're know you you're giving back. It's just such a beautiful thing. So tell me a little bit about who is a perfect client for you. Give, give me an example of someone that you've worked with and where they were when you met them and, and where, they, where they are now today. So I belong to, um, I'm one of the professionals of the Vaster Redefining Divorce. Um, it's founded by Deanna Coyle. And we're a group of professionals that provide support to people going through the divorce process. So a lot of my clients are divorced and divorced men. <laughs> and um, one client, for example, you know, he's never really handled his wardrobe on his own. His wife used to do it. Now he's single and on his own and um, needed some guidance and direction as to like just basically getting it set up right. He traveled a lot. So I helped him identify his traveling wardrobe as opposed to his, you know, everyday wardrobe. Um, I also took the prerogative of uh, helping him, like shopping for him. And um, then he wanted to have his, you know, pictures taken so that he could put it on the, you know, dating sites. So I then did a wardrobe styling and you know, getting him ready for his photo shoot, which he now uses for his dating site. So well, it was a full service from, you know, getting him just awesome. organized, get dressed and looking good, looking, feeling more confident. Well, God bless you for helping <laughs> guys with that, because being an online dater myself, I know there are some really bad profiles. So we are running out of time mm -hmm. and I'm just going to have to say goodbye. I, I would love to get your your last little pieces of advice. But let me just say, make sure you have them cut their nose hair and their yes. eyebrows. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. Do you see? Yes. see? The women, we see that. We, yes. we cut it. <laughs> Cut it. It's hanging out. We see it. I've seen people with just golf balls hanging out of their nose. So, <laughs> Happiness <laughs> Jungle TV show. Super excited to have Lisa and Cheryl on. Thank you. If you can make it on June 14th, that's when the fashion show is. And we look forward to you having a happy, happy day. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.